Welcome to the Six Acre Farmstead. In other videos, I've talked to you about the note taking I utilize here to track uh, what's going on in my hives here. So, uh, this is what works for me. Um, I've been bee beekeeping for about five, six years, and last year I actually took the time and developed this uh, note keeping setup for myself here. Um, helps keep track of what's going on in my hives. Uh, the plan is I last year I had up to 18 hives, this year I hope to go up to 20 hives, keep a few nukes going on. Um, build some mating nuke boxes, but I want to be able to monitor what's going on there and keep notes, especially if I have to have the hive, uh, the state bee inspector out, he can, we can refer to my notes, what was going on with the hive, anything I've noticed and seen there. So let's talk about the book. Um, basically use any kind of <coughs> three ring binder. There's probably about a two and a half, three inch binder. Uh, depends on how many hives. Yeah, I get just trying to prop this up here. Um, you can buy a new binder, or you can, if you happen to go to Goodwill and find the uh, some inexpensive binders, or just repurpose, reuse. That works. Uh, this is a D ring binder, so it actually has a D, so it's got a flat area there in the back. Um, for here is my notes that I keep here. This is actually something I'd come up and let me know where I stand this year from my alive hives, the dead hives, uh, dead outs, um, swarm genetic hive. Just hive number one through twenty. Some of these haven't filled out yet. Some of the plans I have, nuke A and D. These were a uh, double stacked uh, overwintering nukes. I've already moved them into a, their new hive body, so they're actually in full size hives now. Hopefully, they'll expand. They're, they're doing really well, so actually they made it through. So to talk about the the notes I keep there, um, first thing is <coughs> I keep a map of my hives. Um, this was made back in June of sixteen. I lay out my front driveway, something to stand, a solid reference point, uh, especially with your bee yard, what's out there. It depends how many hives you have. Um, just helps keep track of what the location or where these things are, especially if you have a hive consider and you have somebody else coming to check your hives or you're trying to figure out exactly where it's at. Um, I do have an out yard that's away from me. Um, the reference is the creek and on my stand, hive five and hive five nine out there. Um, I built the queen castle last year, had it on the stand. Uh, it's currently not in use, but I have I do have it. And then at twelve sixteen, some of the hive places there. There's my double nuke set up here, <coughs> unused bench. Keep track of some of my dead hives here. Um, what's the easiest way that I found here is go to an old tab system there. So all my hives, I just went and bought packs of like five divider tabs. I have one, two, three, four, five, six through ten, eleven through fifteen, and there's sixteen through twenty. And then nukes A through E, I'll probably add more tabs for more nukes that I'll have here. And many nukes, I'll add like MN or colored nuke and the number tab that's on that. Um, so we'll go back up to 5 1. All right. There's uh, different ways you can do this. I had some copier paper in here, I've got some notebook paper in here. And then online, I don't know if you can order these things, but I happen to find online uh, Man Lake. Has hive inspection sheets, so I copied it to Word document, printed it out, and you have the full sheets of information here. Um, if you decide to utilize this thing, I'd highly suggest that you understand it, read it a few times, and know what information is on these sheets. That way, when you're doing your hive inspection, um, you know what you look for because when <coughs> you're going to do your inspection as you go and then fill the information out after you're said and done with, when you get the hive closed up. So basically I'll do my hive inspection, any concerns I have, if I have somebody with me, I'll have them make the notes. Um, and if it's just me, I'll complete my hive inspection, what I, what I had seen in there, and I'll come back and I'll fill the sheets out and write whatever information. I have not utilized these sheets. I do have them available. That's why I'm, they're in my book here. If, um, but just keep track of what's in there from hot temperament. Did you see the queen? Was she marked? What color was she? How was the laying pattern? Egg scene population? Uh, was there any queen cells? Where'd you see them? Did any disease? Chalk brood, trichomite, small high beetle. I mean, this is a really good form. Has a lot good information on there. I just haven't utilized it yet. Um, for me, I'm a little bit old school. So basically, this is the kind of information on here. So like hive one, uh, date 616, I was in there. Uh, this was the cut comb hive. Um, I found my queen in the cut comb, no brood in the bottom boxes after doing a hive inspection. We found the queen later, marked queen, placed her in the bottom, blood queen excluder. Um, so until then, let's see here, excellent, after their, you probably see almost about two months later, another inspection. Yeah, I was in my hives more, but it's, this is the note taking aspect. I'm trying to be a bit more proactive in being in my hives a little bit more and, and 
keeping uh, track of things. So on August 19th, excellent brew conditions, full brew frames, uh, not much honey, stores, I uh, did not see the queen. I treated with two uh, 27 milliliters Apricard. guard, that was per it, the directions on the container. Um, as I was getting into the fall, uh, 921.16, the top box was light of the two deep setups I had. Uh, realized I need to feed, good uh, brood was good. I found one bee with a deformed wing virus on the mites. Uh, on the, and I seen, a, seen them on the abdomen. I believe this is probably the time I actually had the bee inspector out on that date there. And we marked all this information there. Uh, we checked the 10 drone cells, no varroa on the cells in the bees. Still didn't see the queen. On the 26th, fed one gallon of Man Lake Crow Sweet Liquid. Actually, had a five gallon bucket and, and utilized that. Uh, treated the hive uh, on December. Uh, I treated with uh, two grams of oxalic acid in my Varox vaporizer. If you don't have one of those, I highly suggest you get one. I'll have another video made sometime uh, later in the year on how to utilize that thing. Um, I highly recommend it. Um, it's a good tool to have. Um, See, February 18th, we had some good weather. Uh, excellent honey stores, a uh, small patch of cat brood. Seen the queen, finally, of all this time here, with the white dot, white marking from 2016, and I gave her about a half a piece of a pollen patty. <coughs> um, let's see here, hive two was basically, this is new information, through on March 18th of 17. I uh, moved the bees over winter from Nucleus A for my double nuke into two hive deeps. Cat brood looked good. Seen queen. She was unmarked. I'll have to mark her with white uh, in the spring here because she's a 2016 queen. Hive three, same thing. Actually, two and three were dead outs of this from the winter. Uh, probably the fall and winter. I just uh, checked everything out. Uh, dead out was due to the hive star. Didn't really notice anything of concern there, so I'm reutilizing about some of the uh, about 10 frames out of the boxes out of the 20 frames for those so I'll monitor these two hives there um, <coughs> high four um, back in you see last year poor brood marked the queen white removed three swarm cells this was probably one of my colonies that I had a, a really strong swarm tendency uh, they wouldn't I mean nothing was wrong didn't have any concerns or anything it's just they were they tended to swarm a lot, uh, had a swarming tendency. It's like they pull a few, f have small brood patterns and there'd be a bunch of swarm cells in there. So it was actually a bad genetics in that hive there. So I was glad to actually get rid of it. So hive four, move the hive board, bodies into storage. Uh, basically, um, yeah, the storage on my 616, whatever. Uh, basically I take my deeps, put them in the trash bag, throw them in my freezer and freeze each of the deeps for like two, three days. Um, that way if there's anything in them, uh, kills them off and then I can store them where I don't have to worry about any wax moths getting into the boxes there. Uh, hive 5, treated with April Guard on 712, between hive bodies, uh, August 29th, uh, some cat brood, lots of bees, removed my April Guard tray that I had in there still, no brood around the April Guard tray. Uh, let's see here, top box, oh, low honey stores in the top box, uh, didn't see the queen. On 10, uh, 10 5, very good honey stores. Found two small hive beetles and outside frames. Lots of activity at hive entrance. Uh, lots of bees in hive. Three frames found. Some cat brood. Uh, but bees are back filling with nectar. May check in a week or less to see the status of the honey stores. So these are just my some of the notes that I keep here uh, in my book there. You just put whatever information works for you. Like I said, you, you, I'm, I'm writing the date and what I've been doing in the highs, what I'm seeing in the boxes, uh, what I'm going to do to be proactive. Yes, I do have the main lake inspection sheets. There's other sheets you could probably find. You could probably create your own what, whatever information. But the concept is keeping good notes in your highs, what you're seeing. Track your, uh, I mean, divide them up into each of your boxes. Mark your highs with numbers. I use mailbox tags on my hives that are on the rear of the hive when I'm doing my hive inspections. Um, so I can see uh, so a reference point there. Um, I use the map because in the winter I have a uh, I tar paper all my hives and uh, so when I tar paper hives I know what stand what stand is uh, where it's located here and I can if I have if I do a, a warm weather inspection in there just lift the lid see what's going on there I can reference them off of also reference them also and treat make make whatever notes as needed um 
Other than that, other suggestions I have for you is make sure you keep a couple pens or pencils because say pens, one doesn't work, at least you got a ref another one to work off, uh, work from. Uh, my sign here said you have bees in your house or know any outbuildings, so if I do uh, farmer's markets or whatever, I stick this outside of here and just my notes and then on the back I have pictures of um, cutouts. I mean, doing cutout frame and removals and everything else there. That way, if somebody wants to see what's done, and then in the end, the condition of the house as we put it back together there. So um, that's something I have in my little book here. Uh, old notes. Uh, I keep track of these things here. So like it says in the back. Um, Hot Nuke A and Nuke D were actually, they're moved into Hot 2 and 3. This uh, We had some good weather recently, so I'd move them. I'll just keep the notes there so just fall away. So basically, as I go through the winter, I'm uh, making notes on them also. Um, the condition of those things there. Uh, if you're going to be selling a <coughs> nukes to customers or anything like that, at least you can be honest with them. It says, what have you been noticing there? Um, with good notes, you're going to see what's going on. I mean, you don't want to uh, sell a product that's... Uh, has bad conditions in it, doesn't be bad lane queen or whatever. I mean, this keeps track of there for your own reference there. So if you need to get a new queen, you reference, uh, put a new queen in there and see how well she's doing there. And if it's to your to your likings that you're ready ready to move forward with that hive, either make it into a full colony or to sell the nuke off, you can do so. But these are what I utilize for my notes here. Um, this is this is what I do here. This is what works for me. It may work for you. Um, so until next time. I'll talk to you later. Bye.